Hello, I'm Cam Hunt. I'm Cody Herbert. And I'm Sam Bogacic. And we're doing our presentation on illegal immigrants in the construction industry with the focus on immigration reform. A little introduction to our presentation. According to Statista.com, with a market share of around 10%, the United States is the second largest construction market worldwide. The number of, the, the number of production workers in the United States is 7.3 million, and the value of the U.S. construction industry as a percentage of the GDP is $687 billion. The average annual salary of construction laborers is just over $36,000, according to the Bureau of Labor Statistics. In North Carolina alone, there are over 25,000 construction companies, both residential and commercial contractors. Forecast for new construction put in place in the U.S. starts in 2015 at about $1.02 trillion and forecasted to about $1.23 trillion trillion in 2018. The trending legal issues under federal law state that aliens who have entered the United States without permission or who have violated their terms of admission are identified under the law as illegal aliens. According to U.S. law, it is a crime to enter the United States without permission. The first offense is a misdemeanor, the second a felony, but most cases are dealt with in a civil court and not a criminal court. Although it is illegal, the U.S. provides various ways for immigrants with valuable skills to come to the United States on either a permanent or temporary basis. More than 10 million undocumented aliens currently reside in the U.S., and that population is growing by 700,000 per year. Typical aliens come to America primarily for better jobs and, in the process, add value to the U.S. economy. However, the biggest concern is the value by weakening the legal and national security of our environment. There are many trends driving the improving job market for illegal immigrants that even most skeptics about immigration can appreciate. The first is a rebound in the construction industry. This is good news for the American economy as a whole because construction jobs pay above average wages to low skilled workers. The construction boom from 2004 to 2007 led to a corresponding boom in Hispanic employment and immigrants gained about 1.6 million jobs and native born Hispanics gained only 800,000. Unemployment spiked for both groups during the 2008 financial crisis and contributed to a drop in illegal immigration. Although illegal immigration is still far below its peak, it has begun to tick up again. In the long run, this is not necessarily a bad thing for American workers, because research suggests that over time, an influx of low-skill immigrants allows many native-born workers to perform more sophisticated tasks for better pay. According to Giovanni Perry, an economics professor at the University of California, Davis, more construction workers generate the need for more supervisors, more managers to coordinate them, and more contractors to give them work. According to industry trends, despite an unemployment rate of 7.6%, employers struggle to hire certain positions with millions of jobs unfilled each month. Construction is projected to add 1.8 million jobs by 2020. A study of Latino immigrant construction workers found that nearly 60% arrived in the U.S. with a deep and sophisticated knowledge of the trade. Employment among Hispanics has increased 5% over the past 12 months. According to the Labor Department, compared with 3.8% for blacks and 1.4% for whites. Some facts that we found on immigration report that more than 40 million immigrants resided in the United States as of 2012, 11.7 million of which were undocumented. A study by the, the Pew Hispanic Center concluded that illegal workers accounted for 25% of general construction laborers. Also, according to the Pew Hispanic Center, the construction industry employs the largest share of the nation's estimated 7.2 million undocumented workers. Michael Fink of the Leewood Real Estate Group in Trenton, New Jersey, states that if construction workers who are here illegally are removed from the workforce, the housing business will suffer tremendously. Michael Fink and Mr. Hanover of Christopher Construction have also said that the argument that native-born Americans would replace illegals if the job paid more just doesn't hold water, at least not in the construction sector. Another quote from Mr. Hanover of Christopher Construction that holds a lot of water with us in this presentation states that these people have a very strong work ethic. They will bust their butts all day, 10 to 12 hours a day if you ask them to, and they'll do it with a smile on their face. They have that much of a desire to get ahead. This leads us into immigration reform. 
One of the main things that deals with immigration reform is the fact that these workers are not working in a safe and legally just environment in which most cases their wages are unpaid. The Austin, Texas-based company Workers Defense Project, or WDP, estimates that they handle nearly $7 million worth of unpaid wages cases each year due to the immigration status of construction workers. Another aspect of immigration reform are the bills that have been passed through Congress. In 2013, Senate Bill 744, known as the Border Security, Economic Opportunity, and Immigration Modernization Act, passed through legislation. The bill was created to explain the government's W or H-2B visa program as well as to express ideas about border fencing, knowing employment clauses, etc. A W visa is classified as a three-year classification newly crafted for low-skilled workers in various service industries and, and agriculture. The program grants 20,000 W visas in 2015 and will gradually increase every year. The construction industry, however, was only granted 15000 Immigrant Advocates Associated General Contractors of America, also known as AGC, and a large portion of the construction community were in uproars about this bill. David Brennan stated, The AGC has taken particular aim what it dubs an arbitrary cap on the H-2B visas made available to the construction industry. AGC predicts, that the industry will need 1.8 million new workers by 2020 and the proposed H-2B visas allotted for the construction industry will not suffice. A lot of questions that are brought about when talking about illegal immigration is, are illegal immigrants good for the construction industry? Are illegal immigrants taking the jobs of American citizens? Or do illegal immigrants affect the U.S. economy? But would American citizens do the jobs that the illegal immigrants do? Through scholarly analysis, we have found that the construction industry relies heavily upon undocumented labor. The current immigration laws give some leeway to immigrant workers' rights, but still create a lot of unjust laws and make it nearly impossible for immigrant workers to receive their employment rights. Abuses under the current laws by employers undermine the integrity of the bidding process and also threaten the safety and rights of undocumented workers. Furthermore, all segments of the industry appear to recognize the urgent need for reform. Even if there are differences in priorities among these segments, the universal recognition of the need for reform is encouraging. According to Laurie and Brennan, the recent track record of uncompromising partisanship in Washington, D.C. does not bode well for progress on immigration reform. So in conclusion, as our nation's economy, population, and infrastructure continues to grow, it is obvious that the construction industry and construction laborers will be in high demand. With a small percentage of American citizens willing and able to complete the hard work needed to build these structures, it is also obvious that laborers will be needed from an outside source. With reforms in our nation's immigration policies, we believe that, you know, that the United States could be an opportune and safe environment for immigrants to work and fulfill the demand of the construction industry. Thank you for your time.